Hi friends, I'm back after a really good long weekend and I'm here to answer a question today. Is addiction genetic and specifically is alcohol addiction genetic? And of course we hear more about this all the time and I think a big reason that we hear so much about it is because it's still an area of science that so much work is going on with. Um, there's probably a lot that we don't know um, as much as probably a lot of scientists know, at least that's what I've heard. So it's clear, obviously, that our genes affect us in all sorts of ways. They influence how our bodies react to external substances, like how easily we sub sunburn, for instance. And it's clear that two people respond differently to alcohol or drugs or whatever else they put in their bodies. So, for instance, if I have a glass of wine and my friend has a glass of wine, it's going to affect us differently. We're going to feel differently about it. We're get tipsier, faster, or slower. Um, we're just different people. We're different human beings. So one glass of wine can affect two people very differently. And long-term exposure obviously has very different effects on each of us. And there's definitely evidence for genes that increase proclivity for addiction to alcohol. So just like there's genetic relationships that influence every other addiction, including you know addiction to food or anything else, there is evidence of genetic relationships that influence addiction and addiction to alcohol. Um, Jolene Park, she's a certified health and wellness expert, and she's actually a coach for This Naked Mind, and she sort of describes this relationship a bit like a yin and a yang, like we all kind of are seeking something, we generally have imbalance inside of us, and sometimes it's alcohol that really ticks the box for one person, whereas, you know, food or chocolate might really tick the box for someone else. So there's sort of this, whatever's going on inside of us, perhaps it's a deficit that alcohol or something else could, could be more impactful, more powerful, more of the answer than perhaps something else. Now, I realize that's not to do with genetic, but I thought it's an interesting theory about why some people just so quickly fall so in love with alcohol seemingly, and others kind of go their whole lives, kind of take it or leave it sort of thing. So I think it's, it's very complex, but the question specifically about genetics, so let's stick to that. Um, the reality is, like I said, it's an area we're learning more about all the time. So experts have discovered many loose relationships between genes and addiction and genes and alcohol addiction, but none definitive enough to declare a single gene responsible at this point in time. The genetics lab at the University of Utah, it's a department that studies the role of genes and addiction. They say that someone's genetic makeup will never doom them to becoming an addict. And I think that's the crux of the information here. That's the really good news, that your genes will not define you in this area. Um, Professor Thad A. Polk, he's a neuroscientist and he's the author of The Addictive Brain, which is a great course, very worth watching. I highly recommend it. He says that there is no single addiction gene, that dozens of genes have been identified that affect addiction susceptibility, and that most of them only have a small effect by themselves, that we have not yet found a single way to diagnose or prevent addiction based on genetics. And he goes on to say um, that, you know, you will not be doomed to becoming an alcoholic based on your genetics. And I think that is the crux here. You know, there's so many things we can control. Genetics, obviously, we can't control. We got what we were born with, but actually, um, it, hi Scott, I'm so glad, good to see you. But genetics can't actually doom us to becoming an alcoholic, which is, is very good news. And so further, Dr. Kevin McCauley, he's an expert on addiction, really passionate in this field, and he actually cites studies where rats were bred for high or low genetic burden for addiction. So either rats were bred with all the genetic markers turned on or all the genetic markers that increase your proclivity for addiction turned off. And even the rats that were bred with a genetically low burden for addiction became addicted in these trials. So they were able to give these rats substances over time and even the rats with absolutely no burden for addiction genetically became addicted. So you can still get these mice addicted. So for me, this shows that yes, our initial desire for a certain substance may have genetic influence. Like my oldest son, he doesn't like chocolate. Like what? Like really? But anyway, he doesn't like chocolate and um, perhaps it's genetic. I know some people who from their very first sip of alcohol, it was like they opened a can of heaven on earth and, and that first beer was just everything. And immediately, you know, I know others who 
took a really long time to acquire the taste or the desire for how it made them feel. So I think that there's so many individualities inside of each of us, but experts all agree that genes do not define your destiny. So Professor Polk, he confirms that despite any genetic connections, someone cannot become an alcoholic without repeatedly drinking alcohol. And I think that's a really good thing. And further, you know, scientific studies say that with the right level exposure over the right amount of time, it seems that anybody can actually become addicted to alcohol. So if you consider yourself a regular drinker, like I did, you probably take issue with this statement and like I did. And, and that's because if we agree that there's no specific diagnosable genetic defect that kind of separates this alcoholic population from the population of responsible drinkers, then actually everyone who's drinking this addictive substance called alcohol is susceptible and perhaps even on the path to alcohol dependence. Now, I know this is controversial, but I do assert that over um, the right amount of time with the right level of exposure, the right circumstance, anyone could indeed develop a dependence and an addiction to alcohol. And since we're all built differently, no one can determine when that might happen and when that dependence could occur or what's going to put you over the edge, you know? And I know this isn't popular. It flies in the face of our thriving alcohol industry, our societal dependence on alcohol, and definitely in the face of the attitudes of the regular and quote responsible drinkers who maintain pride on taking it, leaving it, maintaining control. And I was one of those drinkers, you know? I, for 10 years, felt completely in control until the day I didn't. I mean, there's a great quote that says, you know, um, it's basically a habit until it's not. And then all of a sudden you're on the other side and you're like, oh, this has more power over me than I ever thought, than I ever realized. But guess what? At that point, it has more power over you than you ever thought it would. So anyway, I think that if you look at the trajectory of anyone drinking, and let's exclude for a minute the college years and the partying that goes on in there, but rather focus on your daily life once you've kind of settled into your adult routine around alcohol, I mean, how many people do you know, including yourself, drink less, not more over time? I never expected to be drinking, you know, upwards of a bottle and a half, two bottles of wine a night. No way, not in a million years. But guess what? There's something called tolerance. And what tolerance does is it's basically an immunity to alcohol. It's your body's way of protecting itself against the influence of alcohol and building up that protection both mentally within your neurotransmitters so you don't feel it as much, physically trying to you know learn how to process it as quickly as possible to rid that poison from your body. And this tolerance pretty much ensures that you will drink more, not less over time, um, especially if you're drinking for the feeling or for the relaxation. So your body actually builds a tolerance and tolerance, again, it's just an immunity. And that's your body turning down the effects of the substance in order to protect itself. So people don't generally drink less over time. They generally drink more over time. And because of that, you know, I think we all need to be really careful. So the bottom line is yes, there are genetic influences that, you know, increase your proclivity to alcohol, but there's no gene that's definitively responsible, at least at this point in time. And there's nothing we can do to diagnose alcoholism based on genetics completely and to treat it based on genetics. So the good news is that you're not doomed, you're not destined. You have control in this situation with the right um, treatment, with the right, you know, addressing it. And, you know, it doesn't seem that your genes are guaranteed to make you an alcoholic or make you dependent on alcohol. Equally, your genes are not guaranteed by any stretch to protect you from a dependency on alcohol. So the truth is that alcohol is an addictive and with any addictive substance, we need to be aware that it's doing stuff in our bodies and our brains that we can't entirely control and we need to treat it with the caution that it deserves. So great question. Please post more questions below. Look forward to answering them. Have a great day. This has been Annie Grace with This Naked Mind Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. You can learn more at thisnakedmind.com. And please remember to rate, review, and subscribe as it really helps us spread the word.